Yes, we have uh, beautiful people in the house from Hamilton, Ontario, and they travel all over the world. Gary and Sheila Hayes, uh, welcome here. Great to have you here. The first time that Gary was here was in 2014, and uh, we had a great time, and so we built a tremendous relationship. And uh, like I know that they have a busy schedule. They just came back from Asia for six weeks, seven weeks. And uh, so it was kind of funny. Can I say that, Sheila? We had, we had them over for supper, and she was eating her, her, her dessert, and she was almost falling asleep because of the time, time change. So, hey, we're so blessed to have both of you here. So, uh, Gary, if you want to come forward and, and share what the Lord has on your heart, just to let you know, I was able to sit in the first service, and I really want you to open up your heart to this word because I really believe that this word can really change and and, and have an impact in your life. Thank you so much. Awesome. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, church. You, where were you in the first service? Wow. It's good to see everybody here, and it's an honor to be with you guys. Um, as Pastor said, we travel a lot to Asia, and um, in, we actually, in seven weeks, we were in Singapore, Australia, back to Singapore. I ended up having to fly back home to go to Cleveland, and then I came back, went to Singapore, and then flew uh, to Taiwan, and we spent three weeks in Taiwan. I actually spent 47 hours flying in a five-day sp uh, span. I wouldn't recommend that, by the way. And uh, this is actually our 59th church that we're in this year. We're actually going to go to 62 churches. And I want to tell you something. We go to a lot of churches, and uh, this is a great church. It really is a great church. What God's doing in this part of Canada is amazing. And uh, you should just kind of do this, you know, kind of give yourself a pat on the back. You've got great leaders, great elders, great team. Um, we see all kinds of different churches. And uh, it's amazing to see what God has done and is doing in Winkler. Amen? And now in Morden, right? God's doing great things. And so we're excited to be here. Uh, my wife is here. Honey, why don't you stand up? We just celebrated 37 years of marriage. She's put up with me for 37 years. We have uh, one son, and he's married. And we have a grandson named Ethan. He is three and a half. And my kids don't matter anymore. It's all about Ethan. It's, if you're a grandparent, you understand that, right? Um, we love him, and we don't get to spend a lot of time with him when we're not home, but when we're home, he, we have a basement apartment. My kids live down in the basement, and uh, he's not allowed to come up until we knock on the door, but when we knock on that door, he's like, Papa! And if you're a papa, you know what that means. It's awesome. If you have your Bibles or your phones, um, maybe we can put it on the screen. I don't know, but uh, I'd like you to turn to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, we're just going to read a couple of verses. I want to talk to you this morning about collaborating with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to work in our lives. Can I hear an amen? amen. He wants to do amazing things in our lives, and he really wants to collaborate. We'll define collaboration in a minute, but let's go to Daniel chapter 5, verse 11. It says, there is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy God in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. He did this because Daniel, because this Daniel, whom the king called Belshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. I, I, I believe this, that the Holy Spirit wants all of us to supernaturally interact with him where we could be uh, an answer to the problems that the world faces. Can I hear an amen to that? That God actually wants to position men and women who have the Holy Spirit of God in their lives, insert them into situations where you would have a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, maybe a prophetic word, maybe a gift of healing, 
something, maybe a, 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 a spirit of uh, understanding, a spirit of hospitality would come on your life, and the gifts would begin to operate, and you would have the answers to what people need. I get to travel all over the world, and I get put into situations. Many times, I get asked to go into boardrooms of Fortune 500 companies, like high tech. You know, I, I just met the, uh, the CEO of Acer Computers, and uh, this guy is like an amazing guy. He's a born-again believer. He started out of Acer. He took it over when it was like dying. I mean, just completely dying. Brought this company back to where it's a 10, 10, or, 10 or $20 billion company. He started 10 subsidiaries out of this company. And he's a born-again, spirit-filled believer. And so we met with him, and we've gone into these boardrooms where there's unsaved people, and you go in, and I always have to say to them, hi, my name's Gary, I'm from Hamilton. Does anybody know where Hamilton is? Nobody knows where Hamilton is in Asia. And then I say, I'm not a fortune teller, but God has thoughts. And how many would like to know what God thinks about them? Every hand goes up, and then I just go start ministering prophetically over their lives and, and uh, sit with these guys and talk about their business issues, and the Holy Spirit just kind of helps, helps us and speaks to us, and all of a sudden you see lights come on. People's faith gets enlarged. You get, see people start to interact with God that they've never interacted with. That's what God wants to do in our lives. That's what, what's happened in Daniel's day. Daniel was a young man. He was one of the nobles in Judah. He got brought in, into captivity into Babylon, but Daniel had the Spirit of God in him. Daniel was a man that let the Spirit of God collaborate in his life so that he can be an answer to the solu uh, a solution to the problems that King ne Nebuchadnezzar faced. In Daniel chapter 2, we have uh, Nebuchadnezzar having a dream. And he's so troubled. The Bible says he's so troubled and perplexed, he lost his sleep. And, and so he goes to his astrologers and he said, hey, tell me my dream and tell me the answer. And they said, nobody's ever done that. And he says, well, you got to figure it out because if you don't, I'm going to kill you. I mean, this guy was a crazy man. And he started killing people because they couldn't give him the answer. And Daniel says, hang on a minute. Give me a few days. Let me, let me, let me come back to you. A couple days later, him and his friends, they get along with God. And they say, Holy Spirit, we need you to help us. And the Holy Spirit comes on them. And they, have the, they see the dream. And then they give the answer. Now, I believe God wants to position people in, in situations, maybe even in your own life. You've got situations or problems, and the Holy Spirit wants to intersect, collaborate, and begin to do something. When we talk about collaboration, what we're really talking about is the action of working with someone to produce and create something. So when we say, Holy Spirit, collaborate, we're asking him to begin to create and produce something in our life. Does anybody need some creation and producing in your life? Maybe there's an issue. Maybe there's a circumstance. Am I the only one with issues today? Come on, just show me that you're alive. How many got issues? You need the Holy Spirit, right? We need the Holy Spirit to begin to create and produce something out of nothing. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. Would you say moved? moved. Just so I know you're here. Come on, say moved. moved. It says he moved over the face of the earth. Now get this. Chaotic conditions, without void, form, nothing's there. It's darkness. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit is just moving. In other words, one version says he's hovering. He's just waiting. Now that word move, it actually means this, to be tenderly and affectionately Moving. It actually has this idea. If you can get this picture, he's just relaxed. He's just waiting. Because he knows God the Father is going to speak. And as soon as he speaks a word, the Holy Spirit begins to collaborate. And he begins to produce something. You might have a situation right now. You might have a marriage issue. You might have a relationship issue. You might have a career issue. You might have a, a, a financial issue. You might have a health issue. And you're, you're, you're dealing with problems, situations. Maybe something's plaguing your mind. The Holy Spirit is not, he's not anxious. He's just hovering. And he's saying, invite me in. Invite me into that situation. And I'm going to collaborate with you. I'm going to create and produce something with you. 
The Holy Spirit wants to collaborate in your life, your marriage. He wants to do it in your relationships. Maybe if you're in school, in your schoolwork. I have a friend. He used to be in the banking industry. Then he, uh, then he, he moved. Uh, he was still in the banking industry, but he moved to more kind of actuarial stuff. I hope I said that right. And uh, he had to, he was doing loans for um, like car companies. So a car company would uh, buy uh, 500 to 1,000 cars, and he had to do the loan. And, and he said, many days, he said, I would sit at my desk, and he said, I've had these 30 pages, and I'd have to go, and he, he said, I had to scour over every you know, number and detail. And he said, I, I was so bogged, I couldn't figure it out. There were many days I'd walk from my desk, go home, and, I, and he said, I would be so overwhelmed. And I said, what would you do? And he said, I, I'd sit in my bed at night and I'd say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you to help me. I need you to create and produce something here. And he said, I said, what happened? He said, I'd get up in the morning and I'd have the answer. I'd literally be able to go to that page, like page 23, and he said, I would see the answer come out of the page. It was like, just come off the page of the, uh, uh, of the paper, and I'd see the answer, and I'd immediately have it, and he said, time and time again, Gary, he said, the Holy Spirit would help to produce and create something. In the Bible, it says this, that in John chapter um, 14, ver, uh, pardon me, John chapter 16, verse 17, it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. This is Jesus talking, right? He said, it's to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. The Holy Spirit is mentioned 350 times in the Bible. And he's given 57 different titles. The Holy Spirit is what we believe. The Holy Spirit is co-equal with God. He's, he's co-equal with God the Father, God the Son. He's the same essence, yet he's distinct from them. The Bible and the Scripture describes the Holy Spirit in personal terms. He's not an impersonal force. Luke, the force is with you. That's not the Holy Spirit. He actually is a personal God. And he has, he possesses emotions. In the Bible says he can be grieved. He can be righteously jealous. He teaches. He guides. He comforts. He intercedes. He has intellect and will. So he is the person of the Holy Spirit. I know sometimes when we think spirit, we, we don't think of personality, but the Bible indicates that he is a personal God, and he wants to work with us. Now, can I have a volunteer? Brother in the hat, come on up here. What's your name? Josh, Josh that's a good name. That's my son's name. Uh, Josh, come on up here. Stand right here, okay? Let's give Josh a hand, okay? All right. So, the description of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he's our helper, right? Would you say helper? The, 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 the Greek, the understanding of the Greek is this. He's someone who comes beside you. And actually, it's a legal term. It's actually somebody who defends you. Someone who comes to your defense. It's, it's like in Zechariah chapter 3, there's a, there we get this picture, this dream. He has this dream of the courts of God, the courts of heaven. He sees God the judge. And then he sees uh, the devil who's the accuser. And then he sees Joshua who is the, the representation of the people. Joshua is in filthy rags. And then you have this other figure. And it's called the angel of the Lord. And many believe it's the Holy Spirit or Jesus. It's the, it's the Godhead who comes. And the Bible says that the, the Godhead, the angel of the Lord says, I rebuke you, Satan. And the Bible says he takes off the garments of uncleanliness. And he, and he puts garments of righteousness. And the Bible says he puts a, a, a turban, kind of like this, a turban on his head. And on that head, it's not, what does that say, Carhartt? It's not that. It actually says, holiness to the Lord. And the Bible says he, he plucks us from the fire. And so it's this beautiful picture of the role of the Holy Spirit coming beside us and saying, I'm going to help you. What do you need today? Josh, how can I help you today? I'm with you, Josh. Hey, Josh, hey, 
Don't ignore me. I'm right beside you. Come on, Josh. We're going to walk over here. Come on, Josh. We're, come on, Josh. We're, come on. We're going to walk over here, Josh. Josh, watch that. Don't go there, Josh. Hey, Josh, don't think that way. Come on, Josh. Think better. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, when, see, when you engage the Holy Spirit, he says, okay, I'll be your helper. Hey, what do you need today? Just talk to me. You, you need a job? Okay, let's, let's create that. Come on. You, you, need, you need something to produce in your life? Okay, come on, we're going to create that. That's the role of the Holy Let's give Josh a hand. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> He's the one who comes beside right now. Can you get a picture in your heart? That the Holy Spirit is right beside you. Right? Now, maybe your spouse is there. Sometimes in my house, it goes God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Sheila. Sometimes Holy Spirit and Sheila get mixed up. <laughs> right? But, but right, right beside you, the issue. Think about it right now. Just think. On the balcony. Think about it. What's the issue that you're dealing with right now? What's the circumstance right now? Holy Spirit. You're my helper. You're the one who's beside me. I need your help. Come and guide me. Now, John 14, 26, it says this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, watch what he does, these two things. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, the Holy Spirit, one of his roles, I'm not going to, there's many roles that the Holy Spirit has in our lives, but these two specifically, the Bible says he teaches you all things. It's not that you don't need teachers or, you know, you still need pastor clothes, right? It's, it's not saying that. What he's saying is when God brings a word into your heart, there's something that comes into your spirit. It releases knowledge. It re releases wisdom that you couldn't get through studying. There's been many times where I've been studying something, studying something, and then I just put the books aside, and it's the Holy Spirit, like, I, I don't get this. I need your help. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit kind of unlocks. He gives you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And Daniel, in his day, he operated this way. The Holy Spirit began to teach him. He began to give him insight. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a dreamer. Uh, I, I, I see things a lot of times, but I'm not a dreamer. I don't have a lot of dreams, that, uh, you know, unless I've had really pizza the night before, but I don't really dream. And, but, but every once in a while, I've had the opportunity to have somebody come and interpret dreams for me. Or I, I, like I've interpreted dreams for them, pardon me. And so I was with a, um, uh, a U.S. senator and uh, I got to minister to him one, one weekend, and, and um, you know, I, I kind of leave, and we become Facebook friends, so we're Facebook friends. And, and uh, rec you know, one of the recent elections, he got reelected. And so I, you know, I typed him, and I said, hey, Senator, congratulations, uh, really, really excited for you. And he emailed me back. He said, hey, can I talk to you? I said, sure, call me at this time. So he called me, and he said, uh, Gary, I had a dream, and um, I, I, I need the answer. I said, well, okay, <laughs> I don't have the answer, but I said, I know one who does. I said, let's pray. And so we prayed, and he began to share the dream. As soon as he shared the dream, like a TV screen dropped in front of me, and I saw words on this TV screen. So I really wasn't listening to what he was saying. I was just writing what I was looking at. And then I said, so Senator, here's what the interpretation of the dream is. And I gave him the interpretation of the dream, and he starts crying. And he goes, Gary, I don't know if I can... I don't know if I could do this. I said, Senator, do you remember when I was in your office before and we talked about your future? And he goes, yeah. And I said, I think this has to do with your future. So let's believe God and let's just kind of open our hearts and trust that the Holy Spirit is going to collaborate. He said, okay, Gary. And, you know, he, he kind of teared up a little bit more. We prayed together and that was it. Two weeks later, he sent me a video. Actually, his sister sent me a video of exactly the dream coming to pass in his life. God wants to position us. Look, at, I'm just a guy from Hamilton, but I want the Holy Spirit in my life, the spirit of holiness in my life. 
where God can begin to collaborate, working in our hearts to do, do something and c- to create something. So he teaches us. The Bible says he teaches us. He wants to give us instruction. He wants to speak into the situations of our life. And the second one, he says, the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance. Would you say remembrance? Of all the things that Jesus taught you. Has, has Jesus spoken to you at any time? Yeah, he has, right? Like, I remember Jesus speaking to me many times. And in 2000, I was in Israel. I was on a pastor's tour. They, um, they, we paid $500. It was all expenses. We got the flights there, and then we had hotel rooms, food, and we got to see all the sites. I guess they do that so that pastors would take other people to go, right? So uh, I was with my brother-in-law, and we were staying in the same hotel room. And on two consecutive mornings, the first morning, I had this dream. I, I woke up. I guess that was the only time I was dreaming, you know? So I, I had this vision, and I woke up, and I saw Asian people. And so I started praying. I was like, God, I, I, we, had, we had Chinese and Filipino in our church at that time. So I was like, in my limited understanding, I said, God, touch the Philippines and touch China. Lord, send revival to Asia. God, send people to Asia. My brother-in-law is like, dude, five o'clock in the morning. Like, be quiet. I'm trying to sleep. And so the second day had the same vision, but I saw worshiping Asians. And so again, same thing, Lord, touch the Philippines, touch China, Lord, send people. And again, same reaction from my brother-in-law, dude, stop, you're waking me up. That day, we end up going to the garden tomb. Has anybody been to Israel? Okay, so you know I'm talking about garden tomb. Look it up. There's this garden tomb. And so as we walk into the garden tomb, I hear music playing. And so I turn the corner And what do I see but 35 Filipinos worshiping God, just like we did this morning. I was like, I started crying. I was like, and and everybody else is going on in the group, and I just kind of stand there. I'm looking at these Filipinos, and this one guy comes up. He goes, who are you? And I go, "Uh, I'm a pastor from Canada. I just saw this in a vision. Like ugly crying, right? Like I'm just crying my eyes out. And he goes, well, come with me. And he drags me right into the middle of these uh, Filipinos. And he goes, guys, this is a pastor from Canada. They're like, oh. And they go, you want communion? So they give me communion. And so they take communion. We can't take communion. And they put their hands on me and they say this. Send him to Asia, Lord. (laughs) Now that was 2000, right? 15 years later. I have completely forgotten that. I don't even remember that. That is a memory. That's it. I don't remember it at all. 15 years later, I go to Asia for the first time. I'm in Cambodia, and we'd supported Cambodia for 25 years, and, and uh, I ate things in Cambodia I never thought I would eat in my life. And, I mean, it was just a wonderful time. That, eve- that, that was December. December 31st, I'm at church. And our pastor's preaching on vision. That's what pastors do on New Year's Eve. And so we're preaching, he's preaching, and he says this in the message. What are you saying yes to? And in that moment, the Holy Spirit stopped. He was hovering. And he said, Gary, will you say yes to wherever I send you? Now, you have to understand something. I was born in England. My mother, she's still living. She may see this. My mother would cook with two spices, salt and pepper, and not a lot of pepper. I was raised on meat and potatoes. Hallelujah. I mean, my menu was Sunday, roast beef. Monday, leftovers. Tuesday, pancake Tuesday. Wednesday, maybe some lasagna. Thursday, leftover lasagna. Then my mom would make, uh, maybe during the week, a meat pie. And so we'd eat that and have leftovers. And then Friday, because they were Catholics at one point, we ate fish and chips. And then Saturday, whatever, we, whatever was left over during the week. That was my diet. And so when God said to me, will you go wherever I sent you? I was like, dude, I just ate some food in Cambodia that I'm not sure I ate. Like, I ate bugs and I ate, like, no way. I was really struggling with that. About a half hour later, I finally just said, yes. 
I'll go wherever you want me to go. A half hour after that, a friend of mine, an acquaintance, just texted me and said, hey, I think the Lord just spoke to me. He's going to open up your ministry to Asia. I was like, okay. What he didn't know was in 2016, I was going to Asia six times. We went to Singapore that year. And in Singapore, we had a couple that we were staying with. At the end of the time we stayed with them, they gave us a key and said, we believe Asia is going to open up to your ministry. Here's the key to our place. You can come here as often as you want. I started eating things I never thought I would eat. Stinky tofu, durian, like crazy food. My, my sister was like, every time I posted something on the, on the internet, she'd go, who are you? I don't even know who you are anymore. 2017, 17 years later, I'm in the Philippines. I'm standing in the first church I'm about to preach in, and they hand me communion. I look at the communion. I look at the people, and I had this thought. I've been here before. And then the Holy Spirit takes me back to 2000. That little Filipino guy going, send him to Asia! And this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. And I really want you to hear this. So lean in a little bit. Just kind of lean in. Would you just lean in? Come on, lean a little forward. Just push a little forward. Come on, lean in. Everybody, lean in. Please, lean in. <laughs> All right, I want you to hear this. He said this to me. He said, Gary, I never forget what I said in your life. I never forget the promises. I never forget what Jesus wants to do in your life. Church, are you leaning in? On the balcony, are you leaning in? Jesus has spoken things to you. Brother, I see you, man. He's right there. Listen, Jesus has spoken promises to you. He's spoken things into your heart. And right now, you're in a situation where you can't remember because the enemy's distracting and he's pushing you and he's doing all kinds of stuff. But it's the Holy Spirit's role to bring back to your remembrance. Hey, I've spoken this. Listen, the enemy's lying to you right now. You will succeed. Your marriage will succeed. Your relationships will, will be healed. You are more than what the enemy can say to you. It's the job of the Holy Spirit. It's his role to bring back to your remembrance. Now, quickly, when the Holy Spirit collaborates with us, he's going to do three things. Number one, he's always going to bring purpose in your life. He wants to do something. He doesn't want to just make us feel good. Like we come to church, we feel good, hallelujah, sing a few songs. No, no, no. He actually wants to collaborate, create, and produce purpose into you. He wants to do something with your life. He doesn't want you just to kind of just sit and be a normal person. He wants you to be a spiritual person where he's doing and creating things in your heart. He's giving you ideas. He give, he's giving you solutions. He's putting creativity into your soul. You're stuck in a situation, but the Holy Spirit begins to breathe on that, the breath of God, and all of a sudden, things begin to shift and move. He wants to bring purpose. The second thing is he wants to take us deeper in trust. God always wants to create a level, a deeper level of trust in our life where we actually say, Holy Spirit, I'm trusting you. Listen to this scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He will show you the path. He will help you. He will guide you. He will teach you. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. He wants to create a deep, deeper level of trust. And then the third is that he wants to bring clarity. When the Holy Spirit begins to collaborate, when he begins to work and create and do something in our heart, he brings clarity to us. He actually causes us to see. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 says this. He says, I pray, Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened 
that you may know the hope of his calling, you may know what are the riches of his inheritance, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power working within you. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to illuminate. He wants to give you an understanding of your calling. He wants to give you an understanding of the inheritance that's in Christ. He wants to give you an understanding of his power available to work in your life. Church, the Holy Spirit wants to do this. Clarity always requires a letting go of some things for the picking up of others. And so anytime the Holy Spirit's brooding, he's, he's hovering over my life, and he's saying, Gary, hey, I want to take that area that's lacking and that area that's in need of help. I want to do it, but listen, you got to let go. you got to let go, and you got to let me do something, because if you let go of that, I will replace it with something better. I will do something greater with it. Church, are you with me this morning? The Holy Spirit is here. And he's wanting to collaborate. I don't know where you're at. But the Holy Spirit does know this morning. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes, if you would, this morning as we just finish this service. The pianist is ready. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something fresh. Maybe you're here today. You've been coming to church. You've been invited. But you've never invited Jesus into your heart. And this is a moment where you... And the Holy Spirit, he's, he's knocking on your heart and he's saying, hey, I want to create a new life. I want to do something new in your life. If you're here and you've never invited Jesus, this is a moment. The second is if you've been coming to church and you've been just in church all your life, but you've never engaged the Holy Spirit and you've never invited Jesus to come fresh again into your spirit. You've just come to church, but you've never engaged with the Holy Spirit. He wants to do that. If that's you today, would you just quickly put up your hand? I want to pray with you. We did this in the first service. A couple people have put up their hand, but if you don't know Jesus and maybe you've been falling away and now you want to come back to Jesus, this would be a time. Just put up your hand quickly and I want to pray with you. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. Maybe online this week you might want to talk to somebody. <laughs> this morning, the Holy Spirit wants to collaborate with you. If you have a situation, you have a circumstance right now, maybe it's a physical issue, a financial, maybe it's a relational issue, maybe there's something going on in your career, your business, Maybe there's something going on in your marriage, your family, whatever it is. If that's you and you say, Holy Spirit, I want to engage you this morning. I want you to come and begin to bring purpose, trust, and clarity. I want, I want you to bring to my remembrance the things that you've spoken over my life. If that's you, would you just quickly stand to your feet? You've got a situation. It doesn't matter what it is. Just stand to your feet all over the room. God wants to touch you this morning. He wants to breathe on you. He wants to hover in your life. He wants to bring new purpose, creativity. He wants to, maybe a new initiative, maybe something new that God wants to do. The Holy Spirit is here. He wants to engage you. Don't be afraid. You say, I, I need God to come into my life in, in a new way. I just need him to do something in this area. It can be a small area, it can be a big area. The Holy Spirit doesn't matter on those areas. He just wants to engage us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Would you just simply pray this? In fact, everybody, would you pray this? Holy Spirit, come. Collaborate with me. Create and do something fresh. I give you this circumstance. I give you this life. Bring purpose, bring trust, and bring clarity. I yield to you. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. This morning, there was a scripture I wanted to read you. I believe it's Jeremiah 31, verse 25. And it says this. I believe this is for somebody here. 
Jeremiah 31, verse 25. He says, I will refresh tired bodies and I will restore tired souls. I will refresh tired bodies and I will restore tired souls. If you're here today, even those that are standing, if, but if somebody's sitting here and you're, you're just tired in your body, maybe there's just been a lot going on. The Holy Spirit's promise to you today is he wants to refresh you. If you're tired in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, you've got stuff going on, the Holy Spirit wants to restore that right now. If that's you, just quickly stand to your feet too. We want to just pray into that as the worship team, team just sings and we just take this last couple of minutes and just worship the Lord. Just let the Holy Spirit breathe on you. Church, he's here. And he wants to just breathe on you. He wants to refresh you. He wants to renew. He wants to restore. He wants to speak over you. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team.